PBC had Charles Martin and Deontay Wilder and had an opportunity to make a unification bout uh, for the heavyweight titles on uh, the uh, PBC platforms, they went to Eddie Hearn and because, like I said, they're trying to build this relationship with Eddie. They went to Eddie Hearn and Eddie Hearn put Charles, uh, put, put Anthony Joshua in with Charles Martin and we know that the rest is history. Anthony Joshua beats Charles Martin and start acting like a fucking diva, right? Now, that could have all been Deontay Wilder's glory, but the PBC fucked up trying to politic with Eddie Hearn. So after he uses PBC and Showtime to help build Anthony Joshua, remember Joshua used to be on Showtime, um, and after that, he they, they abandoned ship. They left Showtime, okay, and went over to uh, the zone, okay? And Sky Sports, whatever the fuck. He just seemed he left. And he fucked Sky Sports too. But, you know, that's what Eddie Hearn does. Those are the words of 78 Sports TV as he breaks down uh, a little history lesson and the uh, chronological happenings between Eddie Hearn, Al Heyman, PBC, DeZone, and Showtime. And what he said, it was absolutely on point. He. Al Heyman and Eddie Hearn were working together at one point. A lot of people don't know that. And um, the only difference was at the time uh, when Sean Porter, Kel Brook, Kel Brook came here, fought Sean Porter. Um, that was here in the States. Kel Brook beat Sean Porter. Charles Martin went over there, fought as the champion, the IBF heavyweight champion at the time, and went over there and fought Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua beat him. Okay, um, there's a little bit more to the, to that than 78, but he was pretty much giving you the rough uh, breakdown of what happened with Eddie. And as he was talking about Eddie, you know, how Eddie, you know, promotes himself on the backs of fighters and things of that nature. We'll get to that in a second. But um, he was saying his big brother, Deontay Wilder, uh, that could have been his glory. Well, it could have been his glory. It could have been. And there's ways that it could have happened. Um, but what 78 needs to understand, like all those promoters, they do the same shit. If their fighters are winners, they and then they get another opportunity to go somewhere else to get much, much more money, they're going to do that. See, they didn't have to. There was no reason to stay with PBC and Showtime. Why? Because there was no one really big enough at that time. Okay, let me fill in the gaps where 78 left off or left out. Well, when he beat Charles Martin, okay, Charles Martin was the IBF. Okay, that was the first belt that Joshua ever had. That was stage one. Okay, he didn't just leave Showtime in a hurry. Mind you, he didn't. What happened, he then fought Vladimir Klitschko in 17. I think it was April. So he fought Vladimir Klitschko in 17 because that aired on Showtime as well. Okay. And that was considered the king. Vlad was the king. Okay. He got upset by Tyson. Tyson went eight wall. So who cared? So he fought Vladimir. Vladimir and him had one of those type of Wilder Fury 3 type of fights. One of those fights, multiple knockdowns, back and forth. You know, one guy's in trouble, the other guy's in trouble, and then at the end of the at the end of the day, in the eleventh round, the same round where uh, Tyson Fury stopped Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua stopped Vladimir Klitschko. Okay, and then he obtained the WBA. All right, that was also on Showtime. That was not on the Zone. That was not the Zone. Wasn't even thought of at that time. Because remind, remember, this was seventeen. The Zone wasn't even familiar with anything over here in the states until eighteen. OK, because, you know, everybody kept talking about the apps on your phone and all that bullshit. And who wants that? Not to really mention that most people have smart TVs or was getting smart TVs like this one behind me. OK, so that was that. So that was the fill in puzzle piece that 78 left out. OK, then then he left and then they got on the opportunity to fight um, to fight uh, um, um, on the zone. You know, it was, I think, I think he, uh, uh, he was supposed to fault Pulev and Pulev had some type of, uh, shoulder, uh, I mean, chest injury or whatever, muscle uh, injury. But nonetheless, you know, Joshua was on Showtime quite a bit. 
until the zone came around. And then when the zone came around, you know, of course, one billion dollar deal. You heard about that deal. If you don't remember, it was like uh, the budget was a billion dollars. So Eddie had, uh, you know, opportunity to do that with that. And then he was with Sky Sports. He had that deal with Sky and those things like that. And then the zone was supposed to take pick up the rights over here in the U.S., which eventually happened. OK, and everybody was kind of like not really respecting it and kind of hating on it. But what 78 was letting everyone know once upon a time, Al Heyman and Eddie Hearn worked together. Now, I don't know if that obtained any type of bitterness because it law because of the, of the way everything went. But I think you have you and I know you have to have winners and you have to have losers. OK, now, as far as Deontay Wilder goes. Uh, Deontay wasn't a big enough draw at the time. He see him and Charles Martin were pretty much neck and neck. You know, um, I was told that Wilder wanted Martin. Well, that didn't happen because Al was working with Eddie and then they agreed to have the fight over there in the UK. But Charles lost. He got knocked out in two rounds. So at the end of the day, it was like, all right, well, <laughs> you know, I mean, what do you do about that? You know, and, and one thing about a promoter, you know, working with another promoter, you know, they're not bound by contract. Those type of contracts are only by fighters, not promoters. So when promoters shake hands, that's just them shaking hands and agree upon who they're going to have fighting each other. Once those fights are, ha once those fights happen, it's over. That's just like Bob Arum, Steven Espinosa, and, 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 and Al Heyman. Okay, those guys were never going to come to an agreement until they had someone outside. But they did eventually come to an agreement. That's why you had May Pack, okay, in 15. All right? The biggest fight probably ever between boxes, right? So, you know, but after that, that's a wrap. Okay, so... You know, uh, 78 talking about the history of the PBC is quite interesting because you have got people that don't really know the history behind Eddie Hearn and Al Heyman. You know, what really went down, what they agreed to do together. And that's how it is. The only difference is Al Heyman is not a guy that's an extrovert. He's an introvert. Okay. You know, Eddie's that guy that wants to be in the spotlight and this, that, and the other. You know, and now let's talk about that. Eddie Hearn is self is is a self promoter. He is very good at what he does, and he loves doing it. He loves the attention. He likes the attention. He doesn't mind. Eddie will go in front of this guy and and, and have an interview, and then he will go all the way down the line. Whereas some people, like I don't have time for this shit. I'm gonna do one today, and that's a wrap. Eddie will do ten. That just shows you who he how he is and who he is. But the thing as far as money wise, he always lets people know something in straight up. You know what I mean? That's the one thing that he's been known for money. If he tells you I can get you this type of money, this is the money that I'm going to get you. That's a wrap, really. You can ask a lot of people based on his track record, based on the reviews, the reputation, right? The news bars. That's his type of motto. But anyway, it's a quite interesting, I uh, just caught a snippet of uh, 78's Live. You guys tell me what you think of the history between Al Heyman and Eddie Hearn. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace!